Okay, thanks for um, for coming, everyone, this morning to um, for this uh, big announcement. It's a um, very, very important day for the Newcastle Jets. Um, we're happy to announce Gary Van Egmond as head coach for the next two seasons. So anyone with any questions, fire. Dutchie, how are you feeling? Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Over the moon. feel very privileged to... Uh, to come back and, and have a second opportunity of uh, coaching the Newcastle Jets. Were you, when they when they announced Branko was, they weren't going to be keeping Branko, were you, did you get in contact with them? Did they get in contact with you? Um, uh, I think it was a, a, a case that uh, they, they contacted myself and, and it was also through a, a few different parties, so it wasn't exactly direct, um, but uh, I'm very glad it happened. you've got unfinished business here? No, it's, I've actually been asked that question a little bit where, um, you know, that a, a lot of people have advised me it's, it's, it's not advisable to go back to a club that you've been to before. And I don't see it as the same club. I, I, I see it as a totally different club. I see it completely different administration, um, di completely different as far as uh, the outlook uh, for the football club is concerned. So for me, it's... Um, Yes, there's some history, but uh, I see it as a complete different opportunity. So you're picking up the reins pretty well straight away? Uh, Craig Deans will, will coach this weekend against the Central Coast, and uh, um, we're planning for myself to to be hitting the ground running on, on Monday. Different playing group this time, or slightly different playing group. Um, have you had a chance to look at them yet? Uh, I've been watching the, the games, obviously, not in training. Um, and, I, and I think potentially there's... Uh, a good playing group there, but again, it will depend on on how that playing group fits into a, a certain system uh, of, of how we want to play, which will be a possession-based game, and if, if players can adapt, I think potentially they can adapt, but will they adapt? And so that will be the question during the course of uh, of this season. What's the difference in style between your style of coaching and Bronco Camino? Do you think? Oh, look, I think it's a I think there is a, a possession-based style there, but I I, I think uh, more on a positional. Uh, basis. I mean, you can play a number of different systems um, and you can play a number of different ways by using the same system. So, for example, you can play a 4 3 3, but do you play with a holder? Do you play with two holders? Do you play with a wide person starting to tuck in a little bit? Do you have your fullbacks overlapping? What's your rotations? So, for me, the, uh, you know, the, the benchmark of, of what we've seen so far are Brisbane. And, um, you know, hopefully we can. Uh, start to work towards that type of football and that effectiveness as far as that type of football is concerned. How long are you on deck for? I have this year and, uh, and, and next year at this moment. Are there options for an extension of, the, of that? Again that'll, again, that'll be assessed as we go. And um, uh, from my part, um, hopefully that can occur. But um, again, that's something that we'll sit down with management over the due course of the, of the two years and, uh, and go from there. Gary, do you have any... Uh players on your wish list? Uh, again, you know, the, the, the roster's reasonably full. So at this stage, um, uh, it, it's fairly, fairly minimal as far as that movement's concerned. So, um, you know, for me, the most important part is to ascertain the level of the players, what we have here first, and then, uh, and then move on from there. There's been whispers that Joel Griffiths might be, might be coming back to Newcastle. Is, can yourself or Robbie put in a light on that? Uh, yeah, you're right, there has been whispers, um, but I, I can confirm that in my negotiations with, with the club, um, I was asked about uh, Francis Jeffers and, um, and, and what, how I felt about Francis as far as his playing ability and what he could bring to the group, and I thought it was extremely positive, and uh, I can confirm that Francis will be here uh, tomorrow, uh, subject to a medical, obviously, and uh, hopefully he can past that and he'll be uh, within our squad. And going ahead in the future we'll sit down with Gary and look at who we've got in our roster and work out what options we will have going ahead in the future. Mm -hmm. What spot does um, uh, <coughs> sorry, Francis feel? A squad, squad member. It's not a replacement, a marquee replacement or anything like that. So he'll be part of our squad if he passes the medical and that's, that's the big point. So he's going to come over here and we've got a strict medical happening for him on Saturday. So things work out there, he'll, he'll be part of the squad. How long for? How long? For the How rest long? of the season. 
Robbie, what was it in the end that uh, gave, got Dutchy the uh, the nod? Oh, we had some um, some quali quality applicants that um, that we've interviewed, but. Um, Gary's affiliation for Newcastle and um, passion for Newcastle won it, won it over and he, um, he believes what we can do here at Newcastle and we, um, we've got faith in Gary to be um, that, that type of coach we want here. Gary, you took over in similar circumstances in 06, 07. How do you sort of compare the potential of your squad and the club now compared to them? Uh, the potential of the squad I, I, I see uh, reasonably uh, uh, similar. Um, Obviously, with with Francis coming, and hopefully that all works out well, that'll give us a bit more potency in that in that front third. Uh, Club-wise, um, you know, obviously a massive difference. Uh, the stability uh, within the, the club now, from a, a, a sense of administration, from a sense of commercial, um, is is non-comparable. So, um, the opportunity to not not only just with 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 the football team, but with the whole community to, to build something here um, looks very, very favourable. The fact that the family didn't sort of move away and you didn't go, you know, all down to Canberra, was that always, was this something that was always in your mind to hopefully come back? Ah, oh, look, you, you, you think about it, but as a, as a career coach, and I'm probably getting into that mould um, now, um, you, you have to expect to be away from home. You know, it's very unlikely that you're going to be in one spot for the duration of your coaching career and that's just part of the job. Uh, obviously it's something which um, you would like to happen and you have a better affiliation. You know, I don't know how you guys feel but when you drive over the Swansea Bridge, for me it feels like I'm home you know, and uh, I have that feeling here. And it was very important that it wasn't convenient for me. It wasn't a convenient um, decision and uh, it definitely wasn't. It was one which I felt was the best coaching position to do and that was for me very important. Robbie you talked about getting involved in the community, bringing guys up, you had guys like Ben Kanarowski come through the system, is that now more of a focus for you to try and bring a few more of those guys up through and try and get them into that A-League level? Yeah I think it's extremely important to have a um, affiliation with the, the pathway as far as the youth is concerned. So you know that's, that starts with our um, that starts with our youth team, that starts with the Institute of Sport, that starts with our EAP programs, that starts with the Skillaroos, which is, you know, down into under 13s, the relationship you have with Northern New South Wales, the relationship you have with, you know, uh, Hunter Sports, for example, is the, the, the leading sports high school here, and, and the, the general junior development uh, within the area, and, and uh, the upskilling of, of coaches. And I will be hands on with that. Um, I'm not just going to be a, a, a person who is within the Newcastle Jets first grade squad. I will be, uh, you know, looking to get involved with the Jets youth team, looking to get involved with coaching of coaches, and, and definitely uh, forging a, a, a real tight relationship with uh, Northern New South Wales Football Federation as far as their coaching is concerned as well. Because we talked about it a few months ago, and you just said you felt the level of you know juniors in this area had sort of dropped off. There weren't many coming through to get into that national squad in the 15, 16, 17. Yeah, it's such a you know, a highly potential area because of, of the history that we've had and a number of kids that have come through. Um, for me, it probably just doesn't make, it didn't make so much sense that we didn't have that many juniors coming coming through. But I think if we can uh, start to turn that around with the relationships with Northern New South Wales, the, the football associations that are within Macquarie, Newcastle, Port Stephens and Hunter, um, <coughs> and, and again, uh, being hands-on with, with the coaches within those areas, not just myself, obviously Craig Deans and, and the support staff that we have here as well, I think we can, uh, we can make a difference. What do you do with your assistant sort of set up at the moment? Who do you see coming in to, to help you out in that first grade role for the Jets? Well, Craig has been doing an admirable job and I've known Craig uh, uh, previously and uh, he'll, he'll be assisting me. Is there an ongoing search for a marquee player? It's probably more for that's something we'll sit down and go through. Um, like we said about Francis Jeffers coming in at the moment. Um, but he's not a... No, he's not. So we'll look into that. We'll look into that. Gary, is still an option, Robbie? Or? <coughs> we'll look into that as well. Gary, um, no better opponent than the Mariners on Sunday to get back into the saddle? Yeah, as I said before, uh, uh, Craig will have the team. He's had the team all week. And uh, I'll... Um, come in on Monday, um, but again I'll be watching the game. I've still got some 
things I've got to uh, tie up and down in Canberra, of which you know the FFA and the Australian Institute of Sport have been magnificent. Um, they've allowed me to get out of my contract uh, relatively early, which has been great. I've had a lot of support from them, um, from Harm Berger, from John Boltby, from uh, Mike McGovern. And, you know, I, I'd be remiss of me not to, to thank Jan Baslein for um, being able to work with him for the, for the last two years, who's you know, a top European coach and has uh, helped me a lot as, as far as my coaching development is concerned as well. What goal do you set for this season? Again, it's one of, of um, understanding where the players are uh, initially and, and obviously building on what we've done or what the, the team has done uh, pre-season and, and early early stages uh, here within the, the A-League season. So um, getting to get them to understand the way we want to play and getting and, and, and for me to get to understand what um, the, the players are like. And, and not just from a, a footballing sense, but what they're like. I mean, it's, I think it's very important that we have players here who really want to play for Newcastle and, and to ensure that um, we see them turn up every training session, every promotion and every game, giving the 100%.